During the assembly gathering to welcome Nambi and Nambi, the great queen said to her rich son, Son. I am going to send them to the palace gate and send them on their way. By then you should go to your place and make amends and come back. I need to talk to you about something important. Said. That's it, mother, said Madhurand Hakkar and left. He went to his quarters in the palace. Anger and resentment burned in his heart. How many respects to Andy Bandarat, who is passing by. It seems that the honor of the royal family will be affected by his mother. It is no wonder that slanderers often complain about their mothers. Whoever comes with ashes on his body and wearing Rudraksha garlands is enough for the great Maharani. Padhikam is nothing, he should come singing, or you should bring it by saying temple, pond, Tirapani. It seems that he will bewitch the royal treasure by handing it over to such people. Not enough Princess Kundave one is always nearby. If there is anything left over from repairing the temple, she spends it to build a medical road. If we give them space to do all this, how will our desires be fulfilled tomorrow? How will it be possible to ascend the Chola Singh Gadana and send Chola armies in all four directions to conquer the entire land world and rule under the shade of an umbrella? Again, the great queen wants to talk to her son about something private. I don't know what private he is going to say. He will probably start talking about Ashtanga Yoga, Iyama, and Nyam Nidhityasana. Perhaps he will begin to preach on the method of learning the 64 arts without ceasing by bringing the Kundalini upwards by focusing the gaze of the eyes on the tip of the nose. Or he will start telling us about the meaning of Nataraja's Anand Kuth and what his Sada crown means and what the crescent that he wears means. Such talks should not be allowed any more. Even if he speaks, we should not take it by ear. Let it be. Before calling the mother again and sending her, she should speak to the person concerned. How did he know two mysterious messages that no one else knew? Isn't it amazing to think about it? He must have some amazing power. Can he tell about the future as well as the events that have gone by? Let's ask him. As he was leaving the congregation, Madhurand Hakkar noticed that Nimitakara was looking around and hesitating. He signalled him to come with him. Vandiyadeva's eyes were eager to see the princess's face and convey the message through Nayana language. But the princess left with the great empress without even looking back at him. What is this? Has the princess completely forgotten herself? That's how it should be. He sees thousands of people every day. How can he remember his face after seeing it once or twice? I'm crazy, day and night, I was thinking of the princess's face in the midst of so many unfortunate incidents and dangers. Why should the princess have thought of me? The bee loves the honey and hovers around the flower. What worries the bee to the flower? The flower looks at the sun and smiles understandingly. Who is the sun god who makes Kundave's flower bloom? But why would he be disinterested in even knowing the message for which he was sent? Has anyone come before him and said? How can that be? No, no. His face also showed that he was deeply worried about something. It must be due to lack of self-recognition. How can the messenger who went to Sri Lanka with the Antaranga Alai come to the meeting as one of the entourage of Madhuranthak Deva? Aha! How surprised will he be when he meets the princess and tells her about the strategies he used to enter the city? But how to meet? How to send a message? Why? What are you thinking? Vandiyathevan was startled hearing the voice of Madhurand Hagar. By then they had reached the private room of Madhuranthak Deva in the palace. There were soothsayers, 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 and soothsayers on that day. When astrologers see the horoscope, they predict the movement of the planets and stars and tell astrology. The Aridams will tell the people about the Subha Subhas in general with the words spoken by the people who come to them, the time they listen to the Aridam, and asking them to say a number out of a hundred and eight. Rikai Shastra also exists today as it was then. Nimithakers have the ability to see with the inner eye like wise sages. They keep their mind focused and with the help of the inner eye, they look and speak as if they are witnessing the events of the three seasons. Some people sit in meditation with their outer eyes closed and say, 
some people focus their minds on the flame and tell about the events that have happened and are going to happen in that flame. Other than those who have such miraculous powers that their past history and future history appear in their minds when they look at the face of the people they are confronted with, there are also ordinary people who recite omen results with external events such as whether the crow has landed or crawled. Van Diathevan called himself Namit Haka. Madhurand Hakkar was startled when he called. He did not know what other questions the prince would ask him. All of them should be dealt with skillfully by giving appropriate answers. God. How to escape from here. How to meet and talk to the princess alone. No other idea, sir. How much better it would be if I had learned the four scriptures like the child I saw in the church, than if I had been a minister. I was only thinking how much courtesy and honor would befall me. He said. Who said no? You two learn and sing Devara Tyra Patigam. O Prince, who walks by himself as it is written, what is the use of vain desires? What do you think of that boy who sang Patakam? His yoga. The highest yoga. A mixture of Shiva yoga and Raja yoga. Kings and queens will respect that child. His name will be long in this world along with the name of the saints. Valavarayan said this in some blind way. But his words created a frenzy in Madhurandha's mind. Tell me how my yoga is, let's see. Like his yoga, their yoga is a mixture of Siva yoga and Raja yoga. But even better. Dad. Tell me a little more and we'll see. Valavarayan asked for time to think what to say. Therefore, he said, is it possible to do this in a hurry? If we want to tell you in detail, we have to light a lamp, place it and ask them to smoke, and they should also sit behind the lamp and then I will tell them about the future events as they are going to happen. Madhurand Hakkar got excited and ordered the lamp to be lit and smoke to be put on it. Before and after the Deepam, two mantras were placed. After Madhurand Hagar sat down for a while Vandiyadeva also sat opposite him. He closed his eyes and meditated for some time. His mouth was muttering some mantras. Then he shook his body to a rock and pretended to be mad. His body trembled like a maniac. Then, he opened his eyes wide. He stared at the flame of the lamp in front of him. After watching for a while, Madhurandak Devar said, Sir, if I have said anything carelessly about them, I must forgive them. Their yoga is not ordinary yoga. The yoga of the child who sat and read songs in the congregation has nothing to do with their yoga. That child's yoga is the royal yoga that comes from the support of kings, about their yoga in this deepa. What I see, Aga amazes me. He said. What do you see? Say. Say. Said Madhurand Hakkar. Aha. How shall I say? I cannot find the words to say. As far as the eye can see, the beaded kings are arrayed. Ministers, vassals and officers are lined up. Beyond them, like an endless sea, the soldiers are standing in waves. They hold lances and swords and shields on their chests. The light is blinding. People stand on the top of the lofts in the distance, cheering. Crowds of people stand on the ramparts of the castle. They, they, are chanting something. Say, say. What are the people chanting? Prince. Not heard well by the chanting of thousands of people. Long live the appearance of the Chola clan. Long life King Tribhuvana. Long life King Manati. It seems like chanting. Then what? The people gather and advance in great numbers. Soldiers with swords and shields hold them back. For a while there is only shouting and confusion. Well, well. What is the crowd gathered for? Say it. That's what I'm going to see now. A tiger flag is flying high in the midst of the crowd. Below it, a fish flag, a palm flag, a palm flag, a lion flag, a bull flag, and a pig flag fly low. In the middle of the hall, like a Mayan palace, is the graceful golden lion of Navarre. On a pedestal nearby is a crown of diamonds studded with millions of sun-bright diamond vitreous. There is one. Above the shrine are spread white curtains, 
cool with the vanilla of Dan Matty. Maiden-like maidens are waiting with white censers in their hands. Golden vessels are lined with water brought from many sacred turdhas. Prince. Everything is ready for the consecration. Who is blessed? Tell me, father, said Madhurand Hakkar. Here it will be known. The main door of the hall opens. Some people come in with various vows. An old man who looks like Virakambira comes. Another one who looks like his brother comes. Behind them comes a royal prince with a beautiful form, accompanied by Manmadana. Who is that? Who? Vandiyathevan looked at Madhurandhagar once more and then turned to the lamp again. Sir. He is like themselves. What is like themselves? It is themselves. The two in front lead themselves towards the throne. Jayavijayabhava. The chant rises like a sea chant. A hundred hands shower upon them flowers, beads, and yellow grains. Behold, you have come near the lion. Alas! What is this? Who comes across like an omen barrier? A giddy woman comes across, between them and the throne. She stands. No. She forbids them that they are pushing that woman. Damn it! What is this? Smoke comes and covers it like this at a good time. You don't know anything. Look. Look. Take a good look. What's going on then? Prince. I'm sorry. A great cloud of smoke has come and covered everything. Look, father, look. Who is that woman? Have you seen her before? Prince. That Madarasi is gone, and so are you. The council, the throne, the crown, everything is gone. There must be someone in this palace with magical powers. It looks like it has been put on purpose by a spell. Alas! My face burns as if it were burning. Saying this Vandiyadeva covered his face with his hands. He stayed like that for a while and opened his eyes. All the nerves of Madhuranthakdeva's body were throbbing. His face was boiling with anger. The eyes shone like burning embers. Vandiyathevan got a little scared. Vito became afraid of Mo after having stirred the prince's passion to excess. Look again. Take a good look and tell me. Said Madhurand Hakkar. Prince. It's no use. A scene that has disappeared once will not come again immediately. It will only come back after some days have passed. I will look at the lamp and tell you if I know of any other scene. Say, say. Say whatever you see. The people are confused. They are sad and angry. An angel comes and tells them something. Someone from the royal family has been drowned in the sea. Oh! Alas! The people are going to beat that messenger. Prince! If something like this happens, don't go among the people on that occasion. Even if you go, be careful. Didn't you name who drowned in the sea? The name fell on deaf ears in the clamor and confusion. The scene disappeared. Now I see before my eyes a terrible crowd with garlands of skulls round their necks. The Kabbalikas look like Kalamukas. One of them holds a terrible scythe in his hand. In front of him is a altar. Prince. Here also comes a Rajakumar. The Kalamukas surround him and beat their drums. Alas! You must not go among such a crowd, even if you fail to escape. On hearing this, Madhurand Hakkar's face dripped with sweat, his body trembled. Vandiyadeva took care of it. Then, Prince. I don't know any of the above, sorry. My head is spinning, the eye darkens. Someone casts a spell and forbids. I will tell you another time in another place. He said and held his head with his hand. At that time a palace servant came and said that the great queen Sembian Mathavi had asked him to bring the prince. Madhurand Hakkar left with the determination to vent all the rage that was raging in his heart on the mother. Sir. I can't stand the headache. I'm going out of the palace and looking around this city for a bit and I'm leaving. Vandiyathevan said to him and got permission. The son of an old doctor, 
Pinyagapani Pandit had a new phase in his life. Until a few days ago he was content with learning medicine from his father. During his journey to Kadakar, Vandiyadeva told him many things about the outer world. And he didn't stop there. It's natural for those newly infatuated to want to talk to someone about it. Knowing that the doctor's son was a first-class asadu, Vandiyathevan spoke to him about the dangers of falling in love with women. He also told me about the pleasures and pains he experiences as a result of falling in love with a woman. The doctor's son Panyagapani did not enjoy these talks much at first. Little by little he changed his mind. Vandiyadeva felt indescribable anger and rage. He asked what was the name of Manga's village, which caught his attention. Vandiyathevan refused to say. So Pinyagapani's anger increased. By the time he reached Kadakare, the doctor's son had started considering Vandiyathevan as his enemy. The fire that was buried in his heart started to burn when he saw the flower pot. Punghuali rebuffed him and mocked him. Pinyagapani's madness ends when it comes to know that she respects Vandiyathevan more than herself. He even dared to betray Vandiyadeva to the soldiers who followed him. Palyavetarayar's men could not capture Vandiyathevan and took Pinyagapani and went to Tanjore. He had to live in the dungeon for a while. Because of all this, the anger he had with Vandiyadeva grew even more. We saw that he was released before Princess Kundave went to the underground prison to talk to him and set him free. Nandini, Ila Iarani of Pavur, was the one who freed her. Nandini is angry and suspicious that Vandiyathevan escaped from Tanjore Palace without telling her. Her suspicions grew when she learned that he had gone to Palyara and then fled to Eslanadu. She assumed that the princess would try to visit Kundave anyway, coming back to Padayara one day. Then she seriously thought that she would need a reliable person in the old room to find him and send the message. After seeing and talking to Pinyagapani, the doctor's son, she decided that he was the right man for the job. She entrusted him with that great responsibility. She said, he who betrayed you and ran away will soon return to old era. You should keep a watchful eye on where he is going and what he is doing and send word to me immediately. If you do that, I will give you the rewards you deserve. Then Chinapalyavatareya also ordered about Deva who brought him. When that traitor comes back, if you capture him, I will make you a great officer in our spy force. Since then, Pinyagapani has lost his reputation in the medical profession. He was wandering restlessly in the streets of old Array building some sky forts. All of a sudden he gets suspicious. He would run up to people on the street and stare at their faces. He's not. He muttered and walked away. Seeing this, many people began to think that the doctor's son had become paranoid. However, Pinyagapani did not give up his efforts. When Madhurand Hakativa and his entourage entered the old palace, Pinyagapani did not take good care of them. He did not expect Vandiyadeva to be among them. He was gazing round and round in the throng that surrounded the palanquin of Tirunarayur Nambai. Then, Madhurand Hakkar's entourage was seen going at some distance. When the man on the horse near Madhurand Hagar looked back once, Pinyagapani became suspicious. But he could not dispel suspicions as he hurriedly entered the palace.